I'm Tian Wei, and welcome to World Insight. The world is changing fast, taking all our lives with it. You often hear me say these words in the promo of this program, which covers in-depth analysis on many current events in our world today. However, with issues like climate change, we all realize that the future of the world is not just about how we human beings are treating one another, but also, and probably even more importantly, how we are all together respecting the nature and the earth. Our ancestors are great examples that we can learn from. In the traditional Chinese lunar calendar, for example, a year consists of 24 solar terms. Ancient Chinese divided the circle of the annual motion of the sun into 24 equal segments. Each segment was called a jie qi, or solar term. This system of time embodies the traditional knowledge and the social practices through which Chinese organize their perception of the regularities of seasons, of astronomical laws, and of other local natural phenomena occurring during the course of the year. Now, major heat, or da shu in Chinese, is the 12th solar term falling on this week, July the 23rd this year. As the name suggests, its arrival symbolizes the hottest season over most areas of China. It's a crucial season for crop growth where the abundant sunshine heralds a forthcoming harvest. But at the same time, natural phenomena such as rainstorm, thunderstorms, floods, and typhoons will also appear. During the days of the major heat, it is customary for people to drink some herbal tea and have some dry ginger. And I have some great tea with me. Nice. Meanwhile, dried fruits and tools like fans and porcelain pillows are also very popular during the season. To unpack the culture of major heat and beyond, let's talk to Michael Rosenblum, who is running something called the River House in Canton. He's a longtime observer and lover of Chinese culinary art and also the development of China over the past two decades. Let's take a look at my conversation with Michael. Michael Rosenblum, what a pleasure. I'm very pleased to be here. I see you also have some tea on hand. Cheers to I you. Am. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I think we're having this virtual tea ceremony here. Yeah, it seems like uh, there's a connection despite the distance. Yes, indeed. Tea links us together and culinary art. Having said that, though, I know you've been linking culinary art with the solar terms, you know, the 24 solar terms. Tell me more about that. What's the significance of solar terms to you? You know, as a, as a student of history, I think for, for anyone in China, a country with such a long history, you inadvertently become a student of history, uh, whether intentionally or unintentionally, just by being immersed in the culture and the environment, um, it, there's a very tangible sense of history. So I think when you look at any traditional society, you'll find that there is this very strong desire to bring order from chaos. Uh, and one of the, the most elementary ways I think of doing that is to establish a, a method of measuring time. I think it provides a sense of predictability to the unpredictable nature of life. Um, and through that, people can start to feel and sense uh, pattern. Mm. I like that when you say trying to bring, quote unquote, the chaos into order, right? And not only that, but also to uh, bring, you know, ordinary days with expectations, isn't it? Something to aspire to. I guess there's always a new season, there's always a new sort of term just uh, two weeks ahead. Right, just around the corner. So I think what really fascinated me about that from the beginning, uh, we have very similar ideology in the West with the traditional, the passing of time and how that was marked. And, and obviously, Almost every traditional society is an agricultural society. All societies began as agricultural societies. So there is this inextricable link between the movement of time and the movement of seasons and the changes in the natural world and what you know food items that will bring to you. 
and how to manage that because as humans we're always looking to gain surplus and to have abundance and to feel you know well nourished and satisfied so um i think even now as people though we don't necessarily realize it in the sense of the 24 solar terms um we do look forward to seasons and changes we look forward to certain dishes that you know relate to a specific holiday mm. like the sticky rice dumplings for uh uh duangjie the zongzi or for the mooncakes at the mooncake festival or right. for certain dishes that have that that feeling of family and home during uh chinese new year i don't think that's exclusive to any society uh, i think that that's a very universal human uh kind of experience mm. so michael you know i got the chance to take a look at the special menu you prepared together with your colleagues for some uh, different uh, 24 seasons that you just mentioned. It fascinates me how you are trying to combine, you know, the food of the season with, you know, the way of lifestyle that people prefer to have during that period of time and present it onto a table. If I could ask you, what is the dream menu that you would have for a, you know, like a season or a solar term like Dashu? What would you say? We have um, an eggplant dish that we do now, which we call uh, Xia Wei Mian. So we plan the, we have a rooftop garden here and we plan the planting of the garden based around the menu we'd like to serve months down the road. Ah. So um, this particular dish is prepared in the style of Dong Po Rou. So the Dong Po pork dish. Um, Su Dongpo, before he was, you know, he was exiled in Hubei and in Hainan. And towards the latter part of his life, you know, he, I've read some of the things he wrote where he was reflecting and saying that all of the suffering I've endured, I don't want to, you know, put that onto any other living thing. So he actually became vegetarian. He mm. stopped eating meat. So we've taken um, these heirloom eggplant that we grow and we've treated them as if they were pork. And we've yeah. prepared them in the style of Dongporo, of, of this Dongpo style pork. And we serve them with a, uh, a hand cut noodle that we make. So oh, it's an eggplant with a very rich um, fermented bean sauce. Yeah. Uh, and this batch we fermented uh, back in 2019, right before we opened. Mm. So we're preparing it with that. It's a very thick, rich, salty, sweet kind of sauce. It's a Northern style dish, very, very much closer to you than to where we are. Another one that we have, we call Yao Bu Buru Shi Bu, which basically means food as medicine. You know, the um, using medicine to treat illness is not as effective as using food to treat illness. And it's a very simple dish of uh, summer squash with some smoked uh, cured uh, egg yolks that we make here and a reduced chicken stock and some baby shrimp. It's just a very simple vegetable dish. Wow. Mouth watering already, Michael. We need to have an appointment for a, an immediate lunch in Canton. We're here. <laughs> right. I, you know, I would present something from northern China called uh, yes. Pai Huang Wa. Uh, it's my favorite. It's so okay. easy to prepare a yes. well cleaned cucumber, smash it with a Chinese knife, and garlic, um, soy sauce, uh, ginger as well Chilies? as, um, yes, of course, some chili as well. Okay. To give it um, and sesame oil. Yeah. Yes, and vinegar, of course. And mm -hmm. sometimes you could put also Chinese spinach in mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. just to splash it up. So yeah. this is such an easy dish and it's so homely though. I'm sure every Chinese, when we eat this dish, it reminds of us about home. You know, these food bring us so much thoughts about how we seek nature and also how we see ourselves. Mm. What makes us feel at home, you know, in harmony with one another as well. I don't know, as someone who has been doing culinary art research in China for almost 20 years, you know, including your time studying Chinese culture, how do we understand this rather sophisticated and yet could be a simple link between the two? Well, I mean, again, that's a very highly philosophical question, you know? <laughs> uh -huh. um, one of my, my team members here, Victoria, yesterday we were sampling uh, some of our new tea that we 
made this year with a, a, a tea master in Wuxian. It was a uh, New Lan Kung Rou Gui. So it's from the Cow Fence Mountain area of Wuxian. And it's a, uh, a cassia is this the type of tea, tea leaf varietal. And she took a sip and she said to me, this tastes like a summer that I had once. Mm. And I found that just, it was so directly to the point that it embodied everything humanly, the whole spectrum of emotion that we feel and the way that we capture these experiences with food and with memory and with place and time, you know, a sense of a sense of smell and a sense of taste is actually a sensory part of the human body, which is developed earlier than our sense of speech. I think that food, particularly in China, has always been a very natural bridge between people, between cultures. Right. Uh, as China is such a, a multi-ethnic uh, and, and multicultural environment. Um, I think what's interesting about the, the 24 seasons as well is that it gives us a very interesting uh, viewpoint into Chinese culture at a specific place and time. So if you look at the traditional 24 seasons and they talk about, okay, during Da uh, Shu or during the Chou or during Chun Fen, you know, they talk about these are the plants that start to bloom or start to grow leaves. These are the animals that start to become, uh, you know, start to appear in the natural environment. These are the, the physiological changes, but yeah. uh, it tells you more about the people who wrote it and the environment that they were in at the time because those physical changes in the natural world that you may see in Beijing, mm. I won't necessarily see here in Guangzhou. This food and seasonal experience helps us to understand that there have always been really, in a sense, many Chinas throughout the dynastic period where, where the sense of, of uh, country and place mm. and ethnic identity has, has migrated and moved to include all of these different people and all of these different traditions. You know, food is such an inspiration for all of us in so many different ways. The poets, when they have some great food and drink, they will come up with the best verses that the world has ever seen. Um, or uh, you know, a writer that would be a, a sole inspiration for his or her work. Uh, this is, you know, everywhere in our cultures, whether it's Chinese or not. But having said that, though, how have you been discovering China's uh, culinary art? I know you graduated from uh, university learning Chinese philosophy, literature, and then you became a chef, uh, even work in the embassy serving the past uh, generations of uh, uh, U.S. ambassadors to China, and also certainly serving a lot of guests from so many different walks of life and tastes. How have you been learning from this process, and, you know, preparing you to serve eventually now your customers today, which are, you know, just Chinese who are searching for the best food and the best ambience to go with the food? There are quite a few dishes that I serve here now at my own place, which were dishes that maybe the Ais cooked, you know, uh, some of the, the ladies that were in housekeeping or in stewarding that were, uh, working in the kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, we rotated who would cook the staff meal that day. So they would always cook something from their hometown, something like that what? they grew up eating. Um, like hubing. Have you had hubing before? You know, what made with it? ground cornmeal. It's like a fried cornmeal cake with jiu cai, with Chinese chives oh, yes. and with that. egg. Yeah, so it's hubing is- names maybe in different right. localities it's called, yeah. Exactly, uh, which is also very interesting, you know, that it's the same thing by a different name. So we can extrapolate that to a larger human experience that language and belief and spirituality are all different names for the same thing. So I learned a tremendous amount in terms of just culinary technique um, from the people that I worked with. And I, I've always sort of taken the approach, particularly here doing like min jian cai, you know, like very, uh, local home style cuisine here that we've sort of reinterpreted and traveling uh, we know yeah. there are uh, you know such a beautiful journey of both uh, the soul and the food right, um, right. so uh, what about traveling for you in china well this is my um 24th year so i've i've traveled fairly well i'm i'm uh, 
feeling very fortunate that, that I can say that. Um, and people ask me quite often, where's your favorite place in China? And again, like a favorite dish, it's just impossible to say, but travel, I think for me, it's not just expanding your understanding of others. Ultimately, all of that comes down to expanding a greater knowledge base and, and understanding of yourself. Um, travel allows us to, in my mind, at least for me, to establish a reference point um, with which I can re-examine my own culture by finding contrasts and commonality with other people. So in traveling in China, I've realized that there is a, a sort of a group, uh, a sense of connectedness to a larger group, but each individual place, each individual community also maintains a very separate, very individual sense of identity. Yeah. If, you know, the pandemic uh, eases, uh, where are the places that you would travel the most, even though some of the places you've already been to, and the dishes there that you would so much eager to have right there in that locality? Um, Inner Mongolia has always had a very, very, uh, a tenured place in my heart. Um, I've always had just this strong affinity towards Inner Mongolia, which a lot of people find interesting as, as my background is as a chef, um, because the food, uh, comparatively speaking to a lot of uh, my Chinese friends or the people that we meet, they consider very simple or very limited in terms of ingredients. But I find that what it lacks in in breadth, it makes up for in depth. There's a lot of feeling to the food. Um, Xi'an has always been a favorite place. Uh, I remember one of my Chinese professors mentioned to me, this is decades ago, um, that if you consider Chinese culture and history like a tree, you know, Beijing is the branches and Xi'an is the root. Mm. So, you know, when I'm in Xi'an, I, I, I look at this just incredible convergence of cultures and the way that that is expressed through the food, through the spices, um, through the different meats, through the different uh, starches, all different types of noodles and and turnovers and um, you know the different types of pancakes that they have. And each of those is a physical uh, expression. It's basically a bowl of noodles is like looking at a history book. Exactly. Where you have a, a window into the soul of the people. Uh, finally, before we go, I don't know whether there is a poem that you have heard uh, from uh, Yang Wanli describing, you know, the beauty of uh, summer by talking about the West Lake in Hangzhou and also the water lily uh, they, he, he saw over there, uh, something called Bi Jing Xi Hu Liu Yue Zhong Feng Guang Bu Yu Si Shi Tong. Now I can translate all of these into English, but I think it's really just a picture that he tries yes. to present about mm. summer and summer and about summer Lotus. and tranquility in the heart. Yes, yes. I, you can, and I think even for people who don't understand Chinese, in, in I've always been a fan of, of poetry, uh, Chinese classical poetry, particularly Song, Song and Tang Dynasty. And I think when people who don't speak Chinese or understand Chinese hear that in the way that they're read, um, there's still a very strong feeling. Whether you, you, you mentally understand the words which are being spoken, I think it leaves you with something. There's an essence of something left behind, yeah. uh, which is exactly what we try and do with food. You know, it's a beautiful poem. Thank you for sharing. Thank you also. All the best, Michael. Have yes, wonderful to talk. <laughs>